talking women's basketball today. Any 10 now the podcast. We go to Worcester where we're joined by Marina Callahan from as we record this, the number one team in the conference leaderboard. Um, Marina Callahan of the Assumption Greyhounds. First off, congrats on the season. Uh, what's gone well for you guys so far? Uh, thank you. Um, I think that we have just started to play our best basketball at the end of the season down the stretch. And we've all really just come together and started to gel and figure out where we're, each other's going to be. And we just, I think we all play really well off of each other. And that's what I think has been going well for us. Take take me through the ebb and flow of the year, because you guys at the beginning of the season were ranked number four in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and then you took a couple of losses in the first four games of conference play. So you guys are sitting there at two and two. And mm -hmm. I think to some degree, not that people write you off, but like you're just not at the top of the standings right away. So other people draw more attention. Um, and then you hit your stride. What did those early stumbling blocks do that set you up for what you guys have become now? Yeah, I think we just had to figure out who we were as a team coming into the season because, you know, we lost two of our starters last year. So we just had to find people who were going to fill those roles. And, you know, we rely on our defense heavily and we saw that throughout our season last year. And we're seeing that now coming to the end of the stretch of this season. But I think we just need people to figure out how to play together. And then, but with those losses that came, I think it really just kind of motivated us to show that we were a new team this year and we wanted to show everyone what we could do with the new group of girls we had. And like, I think that's showing now towards the end of the season. I know you mentioned defense. It is a hallmark of uh, what the Greyhounds do. How yeah. big a reason was the defense for the the 12 game win streak that you guys had rattled off? Well, I mean, coach always says this too. Like if we come out and play our kind of defense, it doesn't really matter how our offense shows that night. Cause we, that's something we can just always rely on. That is something like we always like we can control that. We can show like how good our rotations are, how good like we're playing one on one defense, how good we're all working with each other. So I think that's just something we can always hang our hat on and have that in our back pocket in case our offense isn't our shots aren't falling that night. The cliche is that people don't like to play defense. <laughs> they like to play offense and score. Mm -hmm. Um how much did it take for you guys to like fall in love with defense or or buy in <laughs> and think it's fun? Um, I mean, if you're going to play here, you definitely need to love to play defense because that is the backbone of our entire program. So <laughs> from day one, you step on campus, you know that you're going to play defense playing for this team. So what motivates you on that side of the ball? Like, it, it do, do you get like excited at stopping somebody from doing what they want to do? Yeah, I think we might get more excited to get a stop on defense than we do, you know any shot on offense like we're coming down the court you know say off a turnover or something we're all looking at each other being like let's go we need to stop like this is the one I feel like that's where we honestly get our momentum from and you know we just kind of feed off of that our bench knows that our crowd knows that like that's really what we love to do uh you mentioned that the defense was a big reason for the success last year as well uh I do want to ask you about last year because not everybody yeah, gets sure. to come to college and go to the elite eight um, <laughs> at, the, at the D2 level is basically the final four. It's the, the time where everybody comes together at, at one site um, and has all the pageantry to it. Uh, what was it like? I mean, that was the best weekend of my whole life last year. <laughs> we, I, I feel like people dream about playing in front of those kind of crowds and we had no idea what to expect. No one on our team had been to, you know, a playoff tournament, Never mind an NCAA regional that we get to host at home. And I think our family, our friends, our community, everyone who knows about Assumption Women's Basketball just came out and supported us. And I know people still talk about it. So <laughs> what was that atmosphere like when you won the region? It was absolutely crazy. I mean, again, like you said, like I just said, like people storm in the court. That's something you only really like see in movies, I feel. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just like having all your friends there to celebrate that moment with you, celebrating with the team, everyone watching, it was so magical honestly tell me about the court storming I mean I feel like I could replay I've seen watched the video so many times but I can like picture it so vividly in my head like I just see Molly absolutely toss the ball and then we're all going to find each other and then it was just a mosh pit on the middle of the court I'm trying to find my roommates like I'm trying to find them like how my mom's like in the middle trying to find everyone my Mom, dad, why are you on the court yeah <laughs> my dad's like hugging all my friends and it's just it was so funny um, what was it like to go to Missouri? Missouri was interesting. I've never been to Missouri, obviously, before that, but um, it was fun to go on a plane with the team to travel just with them. That's not something you're going to do in this conference because you just go on a bus everywhere. So being able to fly there, just getting to experience the whole thing. I mean, 
no matter the outcome of how that game went. That's memories we're going to have forever. So it was just awesome experience to have anyways. How do you do it again? Um, we're just keep, we're going to keep going one game at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good we're, answer. I mean, we still got two regular season games left and those are going to be big ones. So that's really all we're going to do right now. Just go one game at a time, keep doing what we're going to do and bring what we do into every single game. And that's really all we can control for the rest of the season. All right. So I want to ask you some questions about Marina Callahan, the person, um, sure. because on your athletics profile, they've got the fun facts section about you. Um, yep. So I want to ask you about a few of those <laughs> things. Uh, it says dream job as a social media content creator for a professional sports team. Is that still true? I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know exactly what I want to do, but I mean, I run our Instagram. I run the sack one here at Assumption. I've done it in high school too. And it's just all like something that I've always loved to do. And I really just love being involved with sports anyway. So that's something I definitely see myself staying with after I graduate. So uh, best sports memory is the game winning shot for the championship uh, of the league when you were in high school. Um, and you just said the best weekend of your life <laughs> winning the region, but where, yeah. where does winning, where does hitting the shots stack up? Oh, no. I mean, the East region was definitely, that's my best Norris memory. I think I definitely put the high school thing in before we did that. <laughs> but, um, no. Yeah. So it was during COVID. And um, so the tournament kind of switched, I guess. So we just played everyone in our conference. Um, so it was just like an in-conference tournament only with teams on our side. And we, we went undefeated that season and we got to play at home because we were undefeated at that point, but we had no fans. Our parents couldn't come. It was an empty gym. We're all playing in mass. So I kind of think I got to experience what that game would have been like with the East region um, if we like were able to have everyone there. But yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> uh, favorite food is ice cream. Uh, yeah. I feel that. Um, what flavor? Um, cookie dough usually. Fair. I'm a big keto fan, yeah. Or half baked from Ben and Jerry's, if I'm gonna be specific. There you go. <laughs> um, and lastly, uh, I love how favorite book or video game, which is an interesting category to put those together. Uh, but you said Mario Kart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who on the team is the best Mario Kart player? Probably Kaje. She has a Nintendo Switch, and she was actually playing in Missouri with our assistant coach. So she's probably the biggest video gamer we got. <laughs> who do you play as? Um, I used to play all the time with my brother when I was younger, but I would probably be, I think I used to be like Princess Peach or something, like something along those lines. <laughs> That's fair. I was always Yoshi, but he was slow. So it was really a bad choice. So Yoshi was slow. <laughs> Marina, I appreciate the time. Best of luck as you guys embark on the final weekend of the season and uh, looking forward to seeing what's in store for you guys in the tournament. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. 